Yo, what up? It's your boy, Mr. E. And today, we're going to be learning about using tables with measurement conversions. So in the last video, we talked about using one charts, setting up equivalent fractions, and using proportions to help us with our measurement conversions. I thought I'd teach you another way that you could do it, and that's by using tables. This way, I will admit, is a little harder than the other way, but something you're going to have to get familiar with is being able to create a table, an equation, a graph out of pretty much anything. And if you can learn this way, it will be super helpful for you in the future. So let's dive right into the video. All right, so we've got a unit conversion over here at the bottom right. Step one, create a table. And we're just going to create a very simple T-chart. We've got quartz on the left side and pints on the right side. Step two, insert the measurement conversion from the star chart. So we're going to need our handy dandy star chart again. Remember, it'll be your best friend as you do these things. So we got to find out how many quarts are in a pint. Okay. So we're going to insert that there's one quart for every two pints. So I know when I have one quart, that means there's going to be two of pints. Step three, add two more easy entries on your table. So I typically like to just go up by one. So two quarts would have four pints and three quarts would have six pints. I know these numbers don't really help us get the exact answer we're looking for, but then we can start starting or looking at a pattern and develop what we're going to do to help us find out what the answer is. Step four, figure out the rule you're going to use from left to right. So it looks like as we go from the left side of the table to the right side of the table, we're going to be multiplying by two. Step five, solve for the number that you're using. So if the rule is we're going to be multiplying by two, for eight quarts, that would be 16 pints. Eight times two gives us 16. So our answer would be there are 16 pints and eight quarts. Again, I know a lot of you guys are probably screaming the answer from the very beginning. This is a very easy uh, example of how to do this, but there are some times where the table will be even more useful for numbers that are a little bit trickier to use. Let's go ahead and practice a couple problems together. All right, let's start off with this first problem here. Looks like we're converting from fluid ounces into cups. So I'm going to create my table here, okay? Just a simple T-chart. Okay, and we're going to be going from fluid ounces over to cups. So the first thing I need to find is the actual conversion. And it looks like for every um, eight fluid ounces, there's going to be one cup. So this is a little backwards from how we did it before, okay? Eight and one, it's a little bit backwards, but we can still do this, okay? So the next thing is to fill in two more easy entries. So I'm going to, on the right side, go two and three. So it looks like if I have two cups, there's going to be 16 fluid ounces. Three cups would be 24. We can kind of start seeing the pattern that's being developed here. Now the next step is to create a rule. It looks like our rule is we're dividing by eight. So divide by eight. So now I need to figure out 32 fluid ounces. 32, make my table a little longer here. Um, if 32 divided by eight, that's gonna give us four. So our answer would be four cups. Let's take a look at the next problem. Five meters equals blank centimeters. So I'm gonna set up my table again. Meters are on the right, centimeters are on the left, okay? So I look at my handy dandy star chart and it looks like there are uh, 100 centimeters for every one meter. So one over here and 100 over here. I'm gonna insert two more easy entries. Two would be 200, three would be 300. Starting to see the pattern here already. Looks like our rule is as we're going from left to right, we're multiplying by 100, okay? So if I did five, five times 100 would give us 500. So that'll give us 500 centimeters. Pretty easy. This last one, not so easy. As you can see, we have gallons and quarts. So that suggests that this isn't gonna be a very even uh, measurement conversion. So we're gonna create our table. So this one, we might need a little bit of a bigger table to help us out here. And we're going from quartz to 
gallons. Look at my star chart. Let's see how many quarts are in a gallon. There are four quarts in one gallon, okay? So there's gonna be four on this side and one on this side. Let's add two more easier entries, okay? So two is gonna give us eight, and three is gonna give us 12. So something I noticed right now is it doesn't look like we're gonna get a very equal number here because 10 quarts would be somewhere in between this. So it's somewhere in between two and three. I can still kind of figure out my rule though, because as I go from left to right, I'm gonna be dividing by four. I promise it's not this hard to make a division symbol. So what I could do instead is I could just go 10 divided by four. That would fit in two times. And we know that makes sense because we don't quite get to 12 to get to three, so two would be the answer there. We would subtract and that would give us a remainder of two. Now, we could add a decimal and keep going and getting a decimal answer, but we could also make it look like this. Two gallons and two quarts would be the leftover. If I did keep going though, I'd add my decimal, put a zero, raise the roof, drop the zero, that fits in five times, and that would give us 20 and get us our donut at the end. History still loves them donuts, okay? Oh, it's harder to draw the donuts on this. So we could also say that it is, I don't want to write that up there because it goes onto my face, two and five tenths gallons, which makes sense because two gallons and two quarts, that's about halfway between two and three. So two and five tenths gallons would be a good answer. So this is just another way to do it. Um, if you liked the one chart, setting up an equivalent fraction or proportion, you're more than welcome to do it that way. But if you wanna create tables, this might be a little bit of an easier way to do it. And I know that I say write a couple more entries that makes it easier. If you start understanding the patterns and can see them pretty faster, you're always more than welcome to just skip those steps and go to the next one. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope that you get to practice using tables with measurement conversions so you can get a hundo on your next test. Keep learning, Elsbros.